All right, welcome back to Morning Live. And in the studio right now, I want to go the inspirational way and, of course, the empowerment way. I'm joined by the one and only Mr. Kwame Opoku, who is the ECOWAS Youth Ambassador, who is actually in studio with us. He's actually just stopped over from JKA to talk to us right here on Switch TV. The proximity is actually very friendly, so he's actually stopped over. Mr. Kwame. Welcome to Sushi. Thank you so much yeah. for having okay. me. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. Now, of course, I have to call you Ambassador Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, um, you know, from a young entrepreneur, it's been quite a journey for you. Yeah. Um, at only 29 yeah. years old, as I told you, some of us have been around for quite some <laughs> yes, time. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, you can just tell us your journey. You know, b before you're appointed, actually, um, ECOWAS Youth Ambassador, there must be something all those people actually saw. But of course, I'll start just by giving our, our viewers just uh, some few of the accolades you've got. <laughs> now, um, his appointment comes months after he was named one of the most influential young Africans and was listed as uh, one of the top 100 global leaders of tomorrow by St. Gallen Symposium in Switzerland, is yeah, it? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, earlier this year, he also won the highly coveted African Year of African Youth of the Year, MEL, at the Africa Youth Awards, and so much more. <laughs> so, right, of course, in November, is it? Mm -hmm. He was appointed now the Echoes, youth ambassador. Yeah, I've seen enough, bro. So <laughs> your turn. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's such an honor. I'm just coming from the airport and the, and then rushing Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. It's it's really humbling. Mm. Um, so th there's a ten year journey to mm -hmm. everything you're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. I started in 2009. Okay. I just finished high school. Okay. Um, completely lost. My dad had forced me to do science, okay. right? Mm -hmm. But I loved language. I loved communication. Okay. I loved to talk to people. Yeah. So when I was in high school, I hated class. But I loved one thing about school. Mm -hmm. I loved Writers and Debaters Club. Because okay. okay. in that space, I was able to talk yeah, and to talk. write. Um, so, so I finished school. I came back home. At the time, right, um, when you finish high school in Ghana, mm -hmm. you're mostly going to be taught to go teach uh, a primary school or a junior high school, right? Mm -hmm. And at the time, they're paying like $10 a month as salary. Wow. So my dad says, you know what, you're going to stay home and wait for your results for like eight months. No, go teach, go make some money. I'm so your like, results come after eight months? After like eight months, oh. almost a year. Okay. That's how long oh. we wait. The high between, school results, actually. Between high school and, yeah, and university. Okay, right? okay. So okay. Interesting. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do this. I, I want to have a passion for something else that I want to do. Um, he doesn't understand it. And so one of the, of the problems I've identified in the 10 years of building businesses and working and traveling around and talking to people is that there's a generational gap between how our parents perceive things yeah. and how things are working out for us, right? So that was the first challenge. Um, I started off in entertainment, showbiz, media, mm -hmm. did it for about six years. That, in, in 2009, that was the early days of Facebook. Yeah. And I just peaked in Africa. It was a time where all the 322 friends were your actual Absolutely. friends, right? Absolutely. Those early days, so I was yeah. an early adopter. Um, Got on it, started, I started writing, putting it on my wall. Mm -hmm. People would comment, uh, ETC, ETC, yeah, did yeah. it for about six months. Um, one guy who was building websites reached out to me and said, hey, you write some good stuff. I'm yeah. a website designer, I don't yeah. write. But I have an entertainment website, would you be interested? So that's how it all started. Okay. So I went into it, long story short, started doing PR, writing articles about artists, celebrities, stuff like that. Um, and then about seven eight months into it the one thing that stood out for me was okay. i never wrote anything negative about anybody okay i only wrote positive stuff mm -hmm. so i had a, a sort of a niche i'd cut for myself in the industry okay. if you wanted something good about you mm -hmm. go to kwame so you're not a gutter press of some no. sort okay no okay. Okay. um I, for me i always wanted to highlight because you see the the very um, substratum of news mm -hmm. and, and media is that if it bleeds, it leads. Okay. That's why negativity sells, right? Mm -hmm. That's the reason why if you go to the airport today and do an article and say, oh, guys, there was no um, um, crash today, it's yeah. not news. Yes, true. But if there's a crash, mm -hmm. everybody wants to know because it, it bleeds, right? So I, I took the other way. So a lot more artists started reaching out. So then I got into doing more PR for artists, got into a bit of artist management because I was always with them. Yeah. So it only became um, natural for me to start managing. I started doing tours for them, ETC, ETC, did it about five, six years. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I could do more. I felt like my giftings and my skill sets and my talents was calling for more. Mm -hmm. The other thing is there's a certain lifestyle that comes with showbiz, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's nightlife, it's alcohol. <laughs> It's girls, it's, you know, yeah. um, you're in it. 
I mean, I'm looking at you. You, you are in trouble. <laughs> um, so I looked at them like, you know what? I'm getting too attached to the lifestyle. I'm not doing work that I love. Mm -hmm. So I took a break. I said, hey, guys, I need to take a break. Everybody okay. was angry. Okay. All the artists I was working with, the celebrities, they wow. couldn't agree. And so I just, what I did, I, one day I woke up, took my SIM card, I threw it away, got a new SIM card, moved from where I was living. Two wow. months later, nobody wow. could find me for like a year. Wow. Um, and I went into transition. hiding. I went, transition. Transition. Yeah. Went into studying. Guess where I went to study? Where? YouTube. Wow, interesting. So I, I, I stayed home for like a year, mm -hmm. just studying, just online, reading about entrepreneurship, startup, innovation, um, listening and downloading videos from people who had done it, yeah. and looking at how I could polish my speaking, started doing a lot of rehearsal mm -hmm. um, in front of the mirror, recording yeah. myself, etc, yeah. etc. Mm -hmm. And then after a year, I came back. But I didn't come back as a showbiz guy. Mm -hmm. I came back as an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Rebranding myself, okay. throwing okay. the old name away, okay. coming which, up with a new which name. Which sector? Which sector? So when I came back, mm -hmm. I came back strictly into the startup culture. So okay. I came, I launched two companies, a PR agency, mm -hmm. which was now not only um, intended towards artists, but mm -hmm. also businesses. Okay. So if you're a startup and you, you need to launch um, your brand identity, your okay. logo, how you tell your brand story, I did all that, okay. right? And then on the side, I was also doing um, events and media consultancy okay. and media okay. buying. Okay. So those were the two things with which I launched. And then I started speaking about it. Okay. So now, the guy that used to, and I used to be on TV as well, I used to do this as well. Absolutely. I used to be nice. on, on Metro TV, which was one right. of the biggest channels back then. Okay. Um, and so when I came back, the guy that used to do celebrity gossip and all mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Want, was now wanting to be taken serious as a business person. Okay. And they were like, no, we don't know you like that. Absolutely. We know you as the guy yeah. that does celebrity gossip. Mm -hmm. So it was a struggle the first year. Yeah. But eventually they started seeing that I was pulling weight. Mm -hmm. More people were you know, be coming to my conferences, yeah. listening to me speak. Yeah, yeah. The feedback was great. Mm -hmm. um, and so they started taking me serious. And okay. then that transitioned into... All these other things that followed, the other companies okay. I launched, okay. um, the awards. I didn't see any of those things coming. Right. They just were aftermath. I understand that when you launch companies, of course, it won't be just a smooth sailing mm -hmm. in one way or another. Maybe, if, you know, for the youths watching right now, understand some, that they've started something. Yeah. But sometimes you, you, you find those challenges just in front of you. Maybe how, how did you manage now to maneuver through? So I think that there's, there's a kanka in Africa and somebody needs to be very, very honest with young people. Yeah. If you're going to pick up entrepreneurship, you need to understand that you're not going to start today and buy a Range Rover next year. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. I've been building for the last 10 years. I've failed terribly at about six businesses. I've succeeded at just four. And people, and that's the amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. People do not remember <clears throat> a lot of the trash you go through once you succeed. It's, it's the reason why it's everybody true. is sort of attracted to the glitz and glamour. It's true. When people see you on TV, I want to be like him. But they have no idea what you went through wow. to get here. Wow. So that's a problem we need to address. Young people need to get off their high horses and understand that there's work that needs yeah. to go into this. Yeah. Ten years, I'm still here. About three, four years ago, I, I tell you a really deep story. I had to sell my car to get my businesses going and go back to taking Ubers. That's how real it is. Okay. You're going to wake up lonely, frustrated. That days I pay workers and come back home broke. Okay. If you want to do it, you need sacrifice to understand, also. you're going to sacrifice a lot. Yeah. You need to have delayed grat gratification. Yeah. You pay yourself less. You invest everything you get back into the business. Yeah. A lot of people make their first paycheck, 20,000 shilling, 40,000 shilling, and go straight to buying the shoes they've always wanted to buy. Yeah. You, you're not cut for it. The other thing about entrepreneurship is it's almost like swimming. No amount of theory can prepare you for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You need to jump in the water, swim, drink some of the yeah. water, drown yeah. a bit, yeah. come out and become a smooth swimmer. It's That's true. the only way you're going to be able to do it. And yeah. young people need to understand that. Yeah. The, the microwave society, you know, the one thinks quickly, the one thinks quickly. Yeah. But now, uh, you've, you've actually... Um, brought it out very well now in in in, in an aspect where i mean we're having youths who have nothing to start you yeah. see for you you threw your sim card in, and of course you rebranded yeah. yourself yeah. you had nothing yeah maybe uh, from the youtube tutorials you learned so much yeah. and sometimes some of us of course you just need to be spoon fed mm -hmm. now how was it for you because now the capital you need to start somewhere you yeah. know that's the, the problem the major problem you're having in this in this uh, continent the capital how was it for you so when I started, I was just like every other young person. I thought I needed money, 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 money. Yeah, yeah. I learned the hard way. And this is truth that when I say everywhere, it sounds controversial. And I mean, I've spoken at a lot of places and I say to them, what an entrepreneur needs to start a business is not money. What every entrepreneur needs to start a business mm -hmm. is human resource. Okay. If entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, begin to understand the capital that 
people have, mm -hmm. they would completely be able to change the way they approach business. So let me give you a very classic example. Okay. So say you want to start a business. All right. You want to start a... Um, let's find an example of a business somebody wants to start. So I can use that as an example. Say, um, we can say um, just some clothes. Okay, clothes so you want to sell clothes, yeah, yeah, right? Sure. Great. Mm -hmm. And you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. I tell you this. Go on Instagram. If you're based in Kenya, mm -hmm. go and look at all the online boutiques that are in, on Instagram in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Go and look at all the clothes that they are posting. Start your own business page on Instagram. I know that every young person can be able to squeeze and save some 20, 30, 40 dollars. Invest that 20, 40 dollars into sponsoring your page and getting attention. When you go on the page of, say, um, Nick's boutique yeah. and he has clothes there that he's selling for 400, True. you pick it, bring it back to your place, brand it a bit, and put 450. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're picking a, 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 a supply that already exists that yeah. you don't have, okay. bringing it to a different market because it's not everybody that knows Nick's boutique. True. It's about 400 million of us on Instagram. Yeah. Not all of them are following your page or Absolutely. your boutique. So by simply doing a very smart thing, picking Nick's clothes mm -hmm. and calling and saying, hey, do you have stock? Nick confirms and says, yes, I have stock. Absolutely. You come back and say, hey, guys, it's running out quick. This is going very, very great. Mm -hmm. You look at the clothes, find a celebrity who's worn it yeah. or somebody who wore it and it looked great. Yeah. Post it and say, hey, look at this celebrity rocking it. Yeah, it's selling out in the last three absolutely. days, 450. If the person makes the order, you call Nick, pick up the clothes, deliver it, you just yeah. made 50. So it's simply hard work. It's Sometimes it's just really being smart hard and work. hard work. Yeah, sure. It's not really money because mm -hmm. if you're waiting for money, you will never start. You'll never start. How many people have parents who can give them $100,000 to start? Not, not it's not realistic. Actually. Not to everyone, actually. So you need to be able to be very, very smart. Okay. So that's what I do. I give you a great example. My agencies that I run, mm -hmm. I only employ two people full time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have somebody who picks the calls and answers the emails, and I have a PA. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is a freelancer. Okay. My designers, my photographers. Because okay. if you go on Behance, you okay. find designers. Okay. Okay. If you go on Instagram, you find photographers. Okay. So when I take a job from a client, mm -hmm. I send it out. I send okay. a brief to the photographers. Okay. I say, hey, this is the client's budget. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to do it? Mm -hmm. So if you're willing, you send me your portfolio. I examine your work. Okay. But I've been doing it for like three years. So now yeah. I know all the photographers. Absolutely. I know the quality. The quality, yeah. yeah. So when I pick up a job, I'm able to execute and make profit mm -hmm. and not bear the cost that a big branding Absolutely. agency will bear because Absolutely. they need to pay salaries. Yeah. They have electricity to run and air condition. Yeah. That's me being smart and using technology to my advantage because mm -hmm. I don't have that money to spend. Wow. And that's how we need to change the thinking mm -hmm. for young people. Okay. Yeah. Now, the transition. You see now, being a young entrepreneur, I'm very sure you inspired so many. Yeah. Now, um, being this um, speaker, confident speaker, you went out, of course, now, um, the, the global recognition, yeah. the continental actually recognition. Now, how was the transition for you also now being recognized also now coming to the deepest end of it all? Now? Well, so that's the most amazing thing. I didn't even see it coming. For instance, the ECOWAS um, appo appointment came from Cape Verde. Okay. I live in Ghana. I yeah. didn't even know anybody from Cape Verde was yeah. paying attention. Sure. When St. Gallen sent me an email and said, hey, we've been looking at your work, and I own um, a woman entrepreneur. That's actually the reason why I'm here. We're training okay. some women um, entrepreneur CEOs who okay. are starting off. Um, and I, I run one in Ghana called We Festival, Women okay. Entrepreneurship Festival, one of the biggest. Okay. And they said, we've seen your work that you're doing with women entrepreneurs, and mm -hmm. we like what you're doing, okay. and we're looking to award you. I was like, wait, how? Right? So what I've realized is, if you consistently do good work, okay. it sells itself. Sure. It has that exponential selling Absolutely. power. Yeah. I'm sure as I've come to Kenya with this interview, if I'm making sense, somebody will tell somebody Absolutely. and somebody tells Absolutely. somebody. Absolutely. And then tomorrow you, you receive a call from somebody from Kenya and say, hey, yeah. Can you hook that's, me up how, with that that's how it happened. Sure, sure. I, I did it. I didn't apply for them. I didn't see them coming. They just happened. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And um, the, 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 the people who are watching right now, of course, um, they thought, okay, you gave us a span of 10 years. Yeah. But you see the back-to-back -back success story. Yeah. How are you able to maintain that consistency and just branding yourself? And of course, it not getting into your yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah. So I, I tell you two things that nobody wants to tell you. Number one. A lot of so, a lot of young people live their lives off social media. Okay. Social on social media, nobody tells their failures. <laughs> Absolutely. We only take pictures when we're looking super elegant. For the women, <laughs> they take a thousand selfies and choose the best one. Yeah. So if you're living wow. your life off wow. reflecting what on what's happening on social media, you're gonna make a mistake. Yeah. Because nobody's portraying the negatives. I've yeah. had some terrible negatives. Yeah. What I've been able to do is successfully portray the successes okay. consistently. Okay. I've given up. One of my biggest projects I ever did on the day of the event was a huge conference, about 650 people attending. On the day before the event, my main sponsor said, give me back my money. Wow. I'm pulling out. 
because one of the key hosts I had gotten to come cancelled out last minute and the sponsor's major interest was in that host. Okay. So if the host is not coming, give me back my money. Uh -huh. Nearly, nearly messed up my whole career right. because I got so depressed, so broken. I was going to cancel the event and say, "Hey guys, we'll do it next year." Okay. You make that mistake in business, you might never come back. Okay. So I think that consistently, what has helped me is number one, I've had failures, and that really humbles me okay. and makes me know that I'm not some genius. It's actually, mm -hmm. and I love God too, and I yeah, believe sure. in God, so the Very grace of God yeah. really supports me as mm -hmm. well. But being, and th I think the final thing will be the fact that I'm not where I want to be yet. Okay, okay. So I cannot relax. I cannot become complacent. Right. I have a, a target that I'm, I'm still okay. yet to strike. Just hold it right there. We're not taking a short break. When you come back, Ambassador Kwame is still in studio. So his journey has been quite not that rosy as many people thought. But when you come back now, he'll be telling us more about now his prospects, his now plans, what he has, of course, for the youth in the Equus now region. All that after a short break. Welcome back to Morning Live. Ambassador Kwame is in studio and of course the youth ambassador for ECOWAS telling us more about his journey and of course how he's managed to traverse the difficult times, rebranding, and of course starting a fresh business, failing once in a while and of course the biggest one a sponsor pulled out a day before. He had a very very big summit of some sort of a 600 guests who were actually coming to that event and uh, sponsor just pulled out. Wow. At the 11th hour. We continue with this now. Yeah. When you talk about ECOWAS, of course, um, uh, it's, it's, it's mainly focused on the youth. Yeah. But you see, um, it simply tells you that indeed these are youths from Africa. Yeah. And we have the same problem in Kenya and Ghana, in Sierra Leone, in which country, in Africa, the youth, of course, comprise the biggest population. Yeah. And the same problem over and over again. Unemployment, yeah. radicalization, yeah. so many things happening, of course. Now, from your position, I understand you've been there for three months, for mm. going to four months. Yeah. But now, how will you be managing to maybe now, f actually now, face these vices um, just in, on disposal uh, for the youth out here? So, I, I, I say this to you. Um, for me, being called to the Echoes to do the work that I'm doing now, uh, was just say an amplifier of what I was already doing. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the, well, what, two or three of the greatest problems we have on the continent, period, mm -hmm. is we have abysmal leadership, we have a leadership problem. Okay. We have abysmal educational systems, and then we have a misplaced identity problem. And I'll try and address the three of you okay. and see how we tie that into helping young people. All right. Number one, if you go to any African country, you're going to hear one word, constant with every single one, corruption. Okay. Bad Absolutely. leadership. Absolutely. Corruption, bad leadership. Bad leadership and corruption equals policies that don't favor the people. Yeah. Once governance makes policies that don't favor the people, the people are at the wrong end, at the wrong receiving end, and then that creates a problem. Sure. So that's one. Number two, our education is about a century old. Mm -hmm. It was created... Two centuries, yeah. 19th century for the factory worker, for the industrial age when we're doing steam engine. Yeah. And we've moved 21st century and we're still using the same system. Mm -hmm. I still have not been able to factor algebra into anything since I studied it. Right, but I don't want to go there and, and cause controversy in Kenya. I just landed. <laughs> no, 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 it's, 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 it's okay. We're we also trying to change our curriculum, so things are really so happening. So we need yeah. to have that educational problem conversation. Mm -hmm. What happened to dig digital skills? What happened to emotional intelligence? What yeah. happened to the ability to be confident, discovering yourself? Yeah, yeah. Why didn't we have a class on discovering your purpose and your assignment on Earth when we're in in in, in class one or yeah. class two? Yes, yeah, true. Those are important things. Why don't we have a class on discovering happiness? discovering the essence of your work on earth. N all, most of the important things, how many worth creation um, courses do we have in, in our classes, okay, right? Okay. So we have an educational problem. Mm -hmm. The final one that I spoke about is the misplaced identity. Okay. So I say this to you. Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning and you go on Instagram, Absolutely. you probably are tracking, um, you know, a current news, what's happening, sure. other people who challenge your views, so you grow yourself. Okay. Somebody goes on Instagram for the same time that you spend and spends it watching twerk videos. That's a problem. 
that's a personal decision. Yeah. What you go and do on YouTube or Twitter or Instagram, what you decide to do with your spare time and what somebody else decides to do is, is what creates the difference. So the first thing that I want us to address is as young people, we need to stop complaining. Okay. It's okay. It's nobody's fault. Yeah. We cannot put it all on the government. We can't put it all on our parents. We need to take some of the responsibility and get our act together. Mm -hmm. That's one. Yeah. Number two, yeah. we need to challenge the people we've put in leadership mm -hmm. uh, positions mm -hmm. to actually deliver on what they say they're going to deliver. Sure. The work I'm trying to do is to try and get more young people to get in a space of thinking. If I can challenge one person to think and say, how do I make my life better? Okay. How do I then, after I make my life better, okay. make my home better okay. and my society and my community and sure. my country? Sure. Then we can start having, because one person cannot do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's the case where you've gone somewhere and somebody says to you, if we had a hundred people like you, Africa would be great. Absolutely. That's how it is. So now how do we create a hundred of you, a hundred of me, a hundred of everybody that's watching, that's doing something good, and then use that multiplicity and exponential growth to get more young people involved in decision-making and in impact in the continent. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to push. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, as we end this conversation now, um, as I told you guys are watching right now, and uh, they're wondering, um, what will you leave Kenya um, with in terms of just touching the few characters who are watching right now? Because there's so much happening. People are struggling in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. But you see, we can't always rely on entrepreneurship. Yeah. We need Destiny Shepherds who can give us directions. Yeah. You've mentioned purpose. Yeah. Like, w why, why wouldn't we maybe have a class where it will have maybe just sorted, out, sorted us out in terms of purpose and everything? Yeah. So maybe f for the last sentiments, um, in, in this studio, maybe tell us more about just the purposeful driven lives out here. You know, sometimes we, we think things just come, money just come from heaven. Mm -hmm. Hard work, being smart, also the recipes you told us. Finally, the purposeful life, what can you say? So I, I say this uh, uh, to close, I say this to everybody, um, especially young people. Um, we are the luckiest bunch okay. ever to be alive mm -hmm. because we have on at our disposal technology, at our disposal globalization. The fact that I can connect to somebody in Kenya, arrive today and have this interview is a blessing. Absolutely. Five, ten years ago, this was never possible. Yes. I would have to get into the city, look, go through the bureaucracies, etc, etc. Yeah. Every person watching me, my first word I say to you is, stop blaming other people and take responsibility for your life. Number two, Ask yourself one question. If you were never paid again for the rest of your life, would you still do what you're doing right now? No. If the answer hmm. to that question hmm. is no, yeah. you need to push. Absolutely. The way purpose works is, hmm. if I put you in a seat and I give you something to do, okay. and I tell you I'll never pay you again, mm -hmm. something inside you loves it so much yeah. that it would do it regardless of the money or not. Absolutely. That's how you discover assignment and purpose, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So everybody needs to sit down. The problem is we're getting to know so many people. Yeah. We've not sat down to get to know ourselves. ourselves. Who are you? Mm -hmm. What do you love? What impact would you want to make? What thing in the society pricks your conscience when you see it? Mm -hmm. If you can start identifying some of these questions and answers to them, it starts creating a roadmap and a framework by which you can start d discovering your purpose. Okay. The final thing I say to every young person, and I'm hoping that I'm able to do that, and I, I will be coming back to Kenya because sure. it's part of the work that sure. um, I'm looking to do, um, is to every young person on the continent, okay. you are the solution Africa is waiting for. Mm -hmm. You are the one that can fix it. You're the one that can come in and make a change. Yeah. Stop complaining. Get on your feet. Do it. Fail. Get up. Do it again. Okay. At worst, if you yeah. fail, okay. the one thing you've gained is you've learned a very great deal in a very short time, which Absolutely. is what failure is. Absolutely. Expedited learning. Absolutely. So if you can get every young person yeah. to get yeah. up, and be able to push the agenda and say, I will go out there and do something, regardless of what happens, mm -hmm. whether I feel or not, we'll be able to make improvement. Thank you so much, Ambassador Absolutely Kwame. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, someone has been touched. I've also been touched one or another. <laughs> I've also learned, of course, um, an award-winning featureist, a global business keynote speaker, two times TEDx speaker, brand architect, serial entrepreneur, and social media digital marketer, what? He was also awarded 2017 Africa Youth of the Year. The African Youth Awards are named among the top 100 global leaders of tomorrow by the St. Gallen Symposium in Switzerland. Thank you so much for coming. The pleasure is All right. right.